Very happy to have Dipparna Chakraborty with us today. Um, Dipparna is a professor at Dartmouth, and prior to that, he was a researcher at uh, Microsoft Research. Um, he's done a lot of influential work in uh, property testing, monotonic discrete testing, in particular, approximation algorithms, graph algorithms, submodel minimization, etc. And today, he's going to talk about uh, order optimization. Problems. Thanks, Balu. Uh, it's nice to be here, and I'll be here for tomorrow days. Uh, nice to meet. Uh, all of you. So this uh, is a bit of a work in progress. Uh, it's what uh, Chaitanya Swami at the University of Waterloo. So my goal for this is to introduce uh, this set of problems called order optimization problems, uh, and and sort of present a framework of solving them, <coughs> and leave so with <coughs> open directions which should be should be true, and we don't know how to go. Okay. So what are what are these problems? So in any multi-dimensional optimization problem. In general, at a very high level, there are actions and there are agents. And when you take an action, often it gives a vector of, say, costs, one for each agent. And the optimization problem would like to choose the best action. Okay. So let me give three examples here. So for example, in a uh, clustering problem, the input is a metric space, which is a partition into facilities and clients, F, U, D, and C. And there's a positive integer K. The action is to open a bunch of facilities, open a bunch of K facilities. And once you open them, the customers, the clients, have connection costs. The costs are the distance to the nearest open facility. So you get a bunch of vectors. So, that, so given the action, that's the solution. Okay. Uh, let's take another example. Load balancing. There are M machines, N jobs. They have processing times. Action is to find a schedule, an allocation of jobs into machines. And once you do that, for every machine, which are the, say, the agents here, they have a load. So the cost vector are the various loads for every machine. Okay. And maybe one last example, which is the flip where uh, job scheduling, there's now one machine and jobs, but this time the jobs are the agents. You want to schedule the jobs on this machine. And the cost is some function of their completion time. So you process, uh, schedule them, schedule them, the ordering is important. And uh, depending on uh, it could be a linear function, it could be some step function, some arbitrary more function. Each job has its own function cost, and that gives you the vector. Okay. So again, so in there are various agents, and taking given an action, it leads to a cost vector. And now the question is, what is the best cost? For? What is the best action? What does it even mean? Right? So often what we well if, if the optimization uh, function uh, the algorithm does is sort of to hone in on one single optimization function and try to optimize that. And I would say two, there are two kind of uh, uh, optimization functions which are very uh, well studied. One is a utilitarian view, which wants to say, okay, you have a cost <coughs> vector for every action, let's try to find the one which minimizes the average or minimizes the sum of the costs. Okay. So I want to find an action which Given an action, you get a vector. I want to find the action which minimizes some of these costs. So for each of these problems, you get, for example, for the clustering problem, you get a you get the famous k-median problem, which says open k centers so that the sum of the distances to the centers is minimized. For load balancing, it's a so so k-median. It's uh, you know it has been studied. Uh, there's a lot of work. We'll come to that. Load balancing the problem becomes trivial. So I will always send a job to the machine which has the lowest processing time that will decrease that will be the that will be the allocation which minimizes some of loads. And for job scheduling, there is that problem has been studied. It's called generalized scheduling, it has some approximation, etc. So that's the sum minimizing the sum point of view. And then there's the other, which is the egalitarian point of view, which says, I want to find the solution which is sort of fair where no, no, no agent is left behind. So you want to minimize the max of all these costs. And again, for all these problems, you get a, you know, other problems which have been studied for the clustering or the case center problem. You want to open a bunch of uh, locations so that the maximum distance of a client is minimized. For load balancing, you get the so-called famous make span minimization problem. You want to look at the last job that finishes that time, you want to minimize. 
And for job scheduling, it's not too hard to see. It's like more like a deadline scheduling problem. So, so okay. So it's a, it was a cost of, uh, a vector of uh, costs. You convert it to these two things, you get different problems, and you get different algorithms also. Okay. For uh, this, the K-median algorithm is very different from K-centered algorithm, and so on. And so, so the the question that uh, sort of ordered optimization problems ask is interpolation between these two things, right? For example, one might one question might be top L objective. Instead of minimizing the sum or minimizing the max, suppose I minim want to minimize the top L. So I want to find, let's say the clustering problem, I want to open a bunch of K centers, and I look at the top L, or the L farthest clients, and that's the value of the cost function. How do you minimize that? How does the complexity of the problem change when L, L, L is 3? Of course, when L is 1, it becomes the min max. When L is n, the number of clients, it becomes the min sum. So what's the complexity in the okay. So that's the top L objective. We can be more nuanced, and this will be a little bit of a mouthful, uh, which is the ordered objective. So this is ordered, of, the name is coming from the order, uh, operations research literature. So here, you have a weight vector, different weight vector, W1, at least W2, at least WN, where N is the number of agents or clients. And you want to minimize W1 times the maximum plus W2 times the second maximum and so on and so forth. So this generalizes this top L if the weight vector was L1s and N minus L0s. But it could be anything. Okay. So what is the complexity of this problem? So for your favorite optimization problem, you could ask such a question. Good. So, so before we move on to this result, so why study this? Uh, well, apart from the fact that it might be a natural question to ask. Well, one uh, might be the fact that in many problems, the objective function is a means to an end, right? It's not, so, for example, for clustering, you don't know if k-median or k-center is the correct coded and the correct cluster or not. In fact, people often look at k-means that's a different way of looking at it. That's, a, that's an LP norm of the two norm of these distances. So this is giving you another knob to tweak with and study these optimization problems. Okay. Uh, the other is, uh, for, for at least for the clustering problem, is the robust optimization perspective where there is a set of clients, and you know that some L of them are going to come. As in, you have some probability distribution, and you realize that some the, the scenarios are some L are going to come, and you want to optimize your sort of a little bit of a pessimist, and you want to minimize with the worst case scenario. That is exactly the top L. So that's basically the top L clustering problem comes, comes out here. And finally, uh, is the fairness perspective, and this is for the ordered optimization. Suppose you want a solution which is leximin fair, which is not only minimizes the maximum, but given that it minimizes the second maximum, and given that it minimizes the third maximum, and so on. So that can be mimicked as the ordered optimization problem, where the weights are geometrically equivalent. that solution. So, so sort of a natural question, and uh, so what was known about this problem? So again, uh, for the clustering problem, uh, and, and that sort of leads to the name, the top L problem is called the L central problem in literature. And the ordered optimization problem is called the ordered K median problem. And this is the name that they had given. That sort of leads us to call it ordered optimization. And there's a lot of work on that in the OR literature. So let, let me sort of, in the first paper which introduced the top L version, the L centrum version, was in 78. And in 2001, there was a log in approximation for this problem. So it's not a, it's not a, if you, if the first time you've heard about it, it's not a straightforward thing to do. How will you solve this problem? It's not completely clear, at least I would say that. Uh, and then the ordered optimization, which is with the weights, was introduced around this time. And only last year, there was a login approximation given for the ordered optimization problem. Okay. And this year, uh, there were two works. One is actually by me and Swami. And there was another paper in stock, which gave uh, actually a constant approximation for the ordered median problem for, for the clustering problem. Ordered optimization for the clustering problem. Uh, 
so the the plan for and and the load balancing and the other problems were as far as my knowledge are not really studied so what do i want to do in this talk so i'm not going to present the result in this paper so what i'm going to present is a simpler version of it so the plan is to give a general simple framework for tackling these problems uh, and give simple approximation algorithms for this clustering and load balance. And we'll see how much we get to load balancing, clustering, and the job scaling. And maybe this is the right time to say that I would have loved to prove a theorem that if the min version, max version, and the min sum version are easy, then you can do anything in between. Every every other L problem is easy. I don't know such a theorem. It would be nice to have that, but I don't have that for you. But for all these three problems, we will see nice algorithms. Uh, so, so, so keep that open question. I'll reiterate this question maybe at the end. Okay. Also, feel free to you know stop me with any questions and any clarification. Maybe I'll pause here for a minute to see if there are any about the problem definition. Yeah. So just, just for iteration's sake, does this income this like encapsulates minimizing CVAR? I don't know what CBAR is. It's basically an expectation over uh, like a worst case, um, what's the word? Like like the, the bottom percentiles. So it's like the conditional expectation over the quantile. Yeah. Is it the top, as in the, the top the, or the, the worst? worst? The worst. Uh, it's the conditional. I guess so, the weighted version might do it with the correct weights. Right, where the weights are like whatever the probabilities are, right, and then right. the L is somehow telling you what your quantile is. Right. L, and maybe the L is exactly the top quantile, right? Yeah. Um, setting I think so, yeah. Sorry. So there's another way that you can interpolate between uh, average and, and max, which is to drop each point out with probability P, and then if P is one, and then take the max. So when P is one, you get the max again. Yes. As it approaches zero, um, it's sort of the limit is the sum. Right, so L by N would be the top L. Is that? So if you drop, uh, so all of these drops are, are probabilistic, and you're taking the expected uh, max objective on the remaining things. Uh huh. And so if if you let p go to zero, then it, in the answer you'll have exactly one of them. Or or the. I see. Uh, and the where's the max coming in? So it you you take the max over over the points that you didn't drop out. So if you drop nothing out, you recover the max objective. If you, as, as the probability of dropping goes to one, then you recover the sum objective because as it goes to zero, as it goes to zero, um, because the probability of having two two clients remaining right. is goes quadratically to zero. Right. So it might also be I don't know if it's check if it's captured by the weighted thing. Okay. But we can we can. Is this also is this a is it, does this have a um, it came up in a, in a paper on partitioning hypergraphs. I see. Um, so. Interesting. I didn't think about it. It would be nice to check if it falls in this way. Okay. Thing. Any other questions by conditions? Sure. So you were talking about the theorem you'd like to have, yes. which is if max is easy and if sum is easy. Um, for easy, do you have a, a concrete characterization of easy or just, you'd like to say, you know, Constant approximable, log approximable, and you know polynomial solvable. Good question. Yeah. So uh, any such theorem would be nice for concretization. If both are polynomial time, can you prove this is polynomial time? And that, you know, or, or if both have constant factors, this is order. And then if you have alpha and alpha, can you get order alpha? Or we will see. We, we will as an, we will just, let's have this. Let's discuss it after the end because we will see a framework which almost gets there but doesn't quite and I have some experimental evidence that this might be true. <laughs> okay, uh, any other questions? Yeah, sir. Any assumption on the weights? The weights are just decreasing, the blue one, the weights are decreasing. That's important, the weights are uh, not decreasing this whole, we don't know. Oh yes, positive for sure, sorry, non-negative weights, yeah. We'll see why, yeah, actually, yeah. Question. Positive weights and decreasing. Okay, so let's. Uh, okay, uh, so so we. I'm trying to just. Okay, so so okay. Maybe maybe before I show the slide, one of the reasons why arguing over this top L is hard is in some sense you don't know which L are going to be the top L. 
once you take the decision. Uh, for minimizing the max, you could go over all of the possibilities. But if you have L things, it's a, it's a, it, it blows up the number of choices. On the other hand, minimizing the sum is something we are used to. So basically, I'm going to show in two, two three slides that we can move to a problem which sums over all agents. That's and that's maybe the takeaway of this whole talk. So let's just uh, you know this feasible set of solutions is calligraphic S. I is an instance. Given a solution X, I get a vector, and this is a decreasing order of given X. I cost down arrow is a decreasing order. So just to remind, the top L is the sum of the top L. In this decreasing order, and the ordered objective is to find x, which minimizes the summation w i. I goes from one to n, times constant. Okay, so so here's a lower bound for the top L. So it's, let's parse this. So it says the opt is the following: it's min over one parameter t, and once you fix t, it looks at all the solutions x, t times L plus Sum over all the clients, it's cost minus t's non-negative part. Okay, so this no notion is just the max of this number and zero. This is the non-negative part of this. I sum over all clients and sum plus t. I'm sorry, could you could you just go back to the definition of cost again? Uh, so when you uh, yeah good. So this is an instance. When you this is a solution. When you pl play the solution. The client J gets this cost. And is the weight baked into that? Oh, this is just for the top L. Oh. So uh, the, I'm looking at a simpler case where weight says 0 and 1. And uh, I claim that opt is at least this much. So I, I, I'm, it's a double minimization. I minimize over this parameter T. And once I fix T, I find the best solution. Okay. And this is actually a very simple statement. And the proof is uh, one-liner. I need to show you some t for which this RHS is less than the LHS. And the t is actually the LH largest cost. OK, so let's so x star be the optimum solution of the top L problem. And once you fix x star, let t star be the LH largest cost of those clients. OK? Then uh, this thing is going to be non-negative for those top L guys, and then zero for the rest. And since I'm subtracting TL or T star L from them, this is exactly going to be the optimal time. This is sort of a, it's a triviality. But it's an important triviality. So again, the thing to note is that some of all clients, the catch is that this is not quite um, I was going to say linear function, but it, ha it, it has a it has a truncated quality to it. Okay. Okay. Uh, similarly, okay. Uh, maybe one more thing. So the point to note is that there is only one parameter here. So I can guess this parameter. I can guess this t star, and once I guess it, it becomes a problem which is not like some over all clients. So it's if I guess this bold t l, this is the optimum. Then this is the problem that I need to really solve, which I'm going to call opt parameter parameterized by t. It's find the solution where I'm going to take the cost, decrease by t, take the positive part, and add them for all. Because this is a new problem, but it's summed over all clients. And, all, and the crux is that this captures the problem. Okay. And similarly, for the weighted thing, well, again, observation. With, Another observation is that the weighted thing is just a combination, linear combination of these top L things, right? It's just I've written it in this when I where the linear combin the coefficient is the difference between these two weights, and since the weights are decreasing or non non increasing, these are non negative numbers. So it's a linear non linear non negative combination of these L centrum costs, but L goes from one to n. So you can you know similarly write that instead of guessing one thing, if I guess n things. Or rather, some minimized over n things, and it's rather complicated. So what do you expect it to be? Okay. Uh, of course, I cannot guess n things because that that is going to blow up the uh, running time of the algorithm. 
But here's what here's again what you do, which is sort of standard in algorithm design. We bucket the weights in powers of two or one plus epsilon. We bucket the thresholds, the t's in powers of one plus epsilon. Without much work, you can say with one plus epsilon loss, you can you need to guess only log n things, which is also not polynomial because there could be you know n choices of log n things. But these things that you have to guess, the t's are decreasing, so that's only a polynomial in many cases. So um, without really uh, elaborating this, you can get a one plus epsilon lower bound and opt up to one plus epsilon by guessing L things. This, so the number of guesses is polynomial. And after that, you have a rather complicated looking uh, function. But the point is the sum again is, goes over all the clients. Okay, so for the rest of the talk, I'm going to talk about the topple problem. So just it's easier to comprehend. And, I'll, and I'm not going to say anything like if you solve the top of the problem, you can solve this. But for our problems, for the, our algorithms, I'll indicate why solving the top of the problem solves the ordered optimization problem. But for now, let's focus on the top of the problem because, again, the top of the problem is not quite trivial. Here's again the lower bound. Here's what you want to do. Given this T, I want to find a solution which minimizes the sum over all clients the cost. If there was no T, like if T was zero, then this is the min sum version. T is very large, this will be the min-max version. For what? For any T, I want to solve this. So how do you do that? Okay? Good. Uh, I have a question, maybe. Yeah. Something. Yeah. So, so you're going to optimize this lower bound, and why is that, you know? Yeah, it is. Uh, next slide. So there's an upper bound also. It's also the following. So, so given any solution Y and any S, the value of the solution, the value of the solution is the top L guys in that solution, is also given by, at, is at most upper bounded by S times L plus a similar truncated function. So if you can do this for like, if this is, if you set S to be T, with the bold T, the T star L, then this is, if you could, this is becomes exactly opt T. If you can optimize this, then you'll get at, at most opt. Does that answer your question? So let me let me say that again. So this is a, this is a lemma. This says that given any, any simple calculation, it says if I want to understand the value of a solution y, then I just need to look at the cost of every client minus any parameter s, the positive part. I sum that up and add s out. That's an upper bound on how. In particular, this S, if it is this T star, I will have algo is at most T star L plus this quantity, which is exactly oct of T star. So if you can solve oct of T star, you'll have a solution which will be better than oct. Okay? So, and why is this? Well, this is also, again, easy. You played Y, that's your action. Let the costs in decreasing order be C1 less than C2 up to CL. So the, your value is C1 plus C2 up to CL. You subtract S and take the SL out, you get SL plus this. And then you observe as in this is this is at most the positive part. And this is only the clients from 1 to L. If I sum the clients on all the clients, it's only going to hurt the right hand side. So it's an upper bound. Okay. So these are sort of again observations which are important because it basically boils this top L problem into solving this problem. So I want to find a solution which minimizes this uh, truncated cost. And uh, although I've said it, there are lower bounds, they're basically equalities. This, this is the problem that you need to solve in some sense. And maybe you can, again, the conjecture, or rather the question that I would like to solve is if you can solve the min sum version with t is zero, and if you can solve the min-max version with like these rather large, then you could, should be able to solve for every day. And I don't know. I don't have that. I don't know yet. Maybe it's not true. Okay. Any questions about this? So maybe another observation here is, and this is going to be important, that I really don't, I, I can, I have a wiggle room here. So even if this problem is NP hard, and NP hard to approximate, I, I, I can get away with by criteria approximation. What do I mean by that? If for any T we can find a solution Y, 
where where the cost minus alpha t so alpha think of a number is bigger than one think of it as two so these things are smaller than cost minus t so if i if i if i have a multiplier of alpha here and after that this sum is at most alpha times oct of t the oct of t does not have that multiplier then i have an alpha approximation and the reason is that this alpha is going to this will be alpha t here alpha t here which will be at most alpha times oct okay so maybe the reason of the the benefit of having this lower bound is that you can also not only do we want to get away with direct approximations but by creating the approximation to oct of t will also be fine okay good so so the plan now is to show how this approach this framework allows you to solve the problems so there are some problems which fall directly okay for example the job scheduling problem will just fall directly in the sense that this opt t you can solve immediately because it will be an opt min sum version of a different instance so let me explain that so the job scheduling problem again there are jobs one machine i want to schedule them and the cost of a job j is some monotonically increasing function of its completion time that's the problem the min sum version is minimize fj cj over all j and what do we want to solve well we have a parameter t and we want to minimize find a schedule which minimizes fj cj minus t's positive part but summed over all jobs but this is just another increasing function of the processing times so if you can solve for all increasing functions then you can solve for this function as well and indeed you can solve for all processing functions so this is an example where things fall in your map so there is a there is a uh, for this g there is a four approximation and that means that i can find a schedule which minimizes fj cj minus t there is no alpha here with four approximations so this is a unique criteria approximation to this problem and then you are done does that make sense good so another problem where this happens is for example i give you a graph and you want to find the find a perfect matching but you want to minimize the top l well the opt t version just shifts the costs by t and it's another instance of min cost perfect match which you can solve so you can solve the top l version in polynomial time for matching and you can many other problems for so i call those direct applications where the opt t version is just another instance of the sum version so there it is can solve just the sum version you are done okay uh let's try it for the clustering problem so again remember what is the problem i open k centers i have the distances to these centers i want to minimize the top l the opt t version says i want to open centers i take every distance subtract t and minimize the sum of these things the truncated version so that's also going to be a different instance of the sum version the k median version but the distance between i and j is no longer the true distance but it's true distance minus t's positive part so i can apply a k median uh problem on algorithm on that the catch is that this does not satisfy triangle inequality okay but even then so so that's one idea which at, it gives you a log n approximation for instance thinking about log n approximation you can any general metric you can get log n approximation so that recovers old results but we'll see this is not a metric but it's close enough and we'll come back to this later but this idea completely fails as far as i can see for the load balancing thing because in the load balancing you have pijs processing times of j of machine i but what you get on every machine is a sum of processing loads which you're going to subtract by t i don't see how you can you cannot just subtract all the processing loads by t and then add them up because you'll be subtracting t too many times so there are two jobs you'll be subtracting two t right so it's not clear to me how you can do solve the load balancing problem with the direct application that sort of needs a new idea and maybe in the next few minutes we'll talk about that idea that's a different that's an idea which is one attack on these problems so questions for i'm going to move to the load balance top and load balance you know we kind of one quest for your conjecture so the if you assume we can solve the weighted version of the problem 
Yeah. Weighted but not taunted version of the problem. Yeah. That's maybe a stronger assumption. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll allow you that. But you I don't think know. even like weighted. That's so still unknown how to do it. I don't know. So by weighted, I, I'm assuming you're saying you can minimize summation wj cost j exactly. x where j wj is on a j agent yeah yeah i don't know because like yeah okay so again maybe maybe i'm not may not get to the clustering but the load balancing is very cute so i'd like to spend some time on it so there are m machines n tasks processing times pij i want to find a schedule which which basically i want to get this for as small as an alpha I want to look at the sum over all machines, the load minus alpha t plus, and I want to bound it by alpha times oct t, but oct t doesn't have that alpha. Okay, and the you know again, this is the part which I want to get our heads around. How do we how do we figure out about oct t? Okay, so let's write let's use our tools from approximation algorithms. Let's write an integer probe. Okay, so that's easy. So I have a variable x i j which says whether job j goes on i every job must be allocated and now this is not linear so this is a, it's an integer program but not an integer linear program it says for every machine i i look at the truncated linear part okay and uh, to make it linear is also a, it's, a, it's a simple idea but again it's sort of powerful and the, it says the idea to make this to linearize this is to split xij into two parts, yij plus zij. So right now I've just done nothing here. And then and then observe, and basically the semantic of the zij is it's going to eat away this t part. So I want to remove this plus here. This is what is making the thing not linear. So I'm to remove this plus. I'm doing this by taking xij and splitting into yij plus zij. Zij is supposed to eat this t. What do I mean by that? I want to I want to move to this. I, I just take the summation pij, yij, and pij, zij summed over all j should be at most t. The function of the z variables is to eat the t. And whatever remains, the y, which is x minus z, is what is going to be the cost. So that's a, that's a generic idea. You can do it for all oct problems. I just have your old L, whatever, ip. Split the variable into two. One part eats the t, the other part goes on the object. Greater. It should be great, greater than. No, no. This is what is so. So the total load could be less than t. It could be t by two, and yet I get zero. So the zij is eating up to the t. So maybe yeah, let's spend some time on this. So this quantity here could be t. Could be if it is less than t, I should get zero. So till it is getting, so this z part is trying to eat away the stuff that is still t. It could be t by 2, but it is not allowed to be more than t. So z part does not go in the objective. Whatever is remaining, I pay. Right? Suppose the answer was, was t plus 1, z will be t and y will be 1 if there's only one bit. But if the answer is t by 2, z will be t by 2, and this part will be t by 2 and y will be 0. It's, this is less than t. Is this clear? And this is probably another simple idea. So this is an integer program, and in fact, you can show it's equal. This integer program captures this parameterized job. So what's the uh, usual thing? Usual thing is you make uh, this, you linearize this. Instead of 0, 1, you say it's between 0 and 1. But this linear program has a gap. And maybe that is what points to see. And the example is this, there's one job, t machines. The processing time is t squared on every, every job. And if I split, I just use the z variables to allocate every, everywhere and y's are zeros. Then what do I get? I get sum over, so, so the total load on any machine is one by t fraction of this. So it's going to be at most t. So this is satisfied. And therefore the total, LP value becomes zero. Have I lost you? I don't want to lose anyone. So maybe, maybe the other way of saying is, 
That gap was there for the the piecewise linear formulation as well. The gap is there for the piecewise linear formulation as well. Yeah, I'm not. I, I right. I'm just saying that from the integer to the linear, I get a gap. Okay. Right. So what I'm trying to get at is I want to I want to strengthen this LP by adding some inequalities which are true for the zero one problem, valid inequalities for this LP, and that's the thing I was getting at. So this is the valid inequality that I will, I will be adding, and this is going to be useful. What does it say? It's saying that, so this is a normal, it would be a normal LP for the load balancing problem, except the objective has Y values and their constraints on the X values. And this is connecting the Y values to the X values. It's saying for any I and J, any machine uh, and job pair, Pij, Yij cannot be very small. Here, note that in this example, Pij, Yij are zero everywhere. While all the Xij's are non-zero. So this thing that cannot happen. Pij, Yij is at, at least Pij minus T is positive part times Xij. So you cannot cheat. And why can I add that? Well, it's sort of easy to see. Well, if Xij is zero, there's nothing to do. This is zero. So the so if xij is zero or pij is less than t, the RHS is zero, so there's nothing to do. So, so pij, for this claim, pij is bigger than t and xij is one. So note that I'm looking at the integer solution here. This is valid for in the integer solution. So xij is one, but if pij is bigger than t, this constraint says that zij cannot be large. Zij cannot be one, right? So zij has to be less than t by pij. Because the total Z load on any machine is bounded by T. So Z IJ is less than T by PIJ. But Z IJ plus Y IJ is one. It's XIJ. This job has been allocated. So Y IJ is at least PIJ minus T by PIJ, which if you take these things, you get this. So this is so we're getting somewhere. And then this is sort of uh, we have found okay, so basically we have uh, written this LP relaxation. Which at least uh, we don't know it's good or not, but it says that the YIJs cannot be completely cheating. You cannot just put zero on the YIJs and have to charge XIJs. Is this LP clear? So this, I claim that this strategy you can do for any order, any topple problem. Okay, we'll not we'll not come to order, but any topple problem you can do. You can have these X variables. You can split into Y plus Z and write such a thing. And the reason I'm saying this general thing again is because of the conjecture, which I can't prove, that if you have the min sum of the min max, and you can do this. Okay, but for this video, so this is the LP. So how do we use this LP? And this is, uh, the algorithm to solve this problem is the same algorithm that is used for the min max. And this is a beautiful algorithm, so I'm going to spend two slides on it. For people who know it, it might be repetition, people who know it, so pretty amazing algorithm. It's the schmoy stardust algorithm to round this LP. Okay, so again, there are jobs on one side, machines on the other side. I'm going to flip them up, so jobs will be down, machines will be on top. And what does the LP say? Just the X values, we'll come to Ys and Zs later. Just the X value says every job has to be allocated somewhere. So total ma X mass is one. But the total <laughs> X mass here may not be one, it can be more than one, it can be less than one. So the <coughs> schmoy stardust rounding splits splits every machine into many machines. So for example, in this, you look at, for every machine, you look at the ceiling of the total X mass. I guess here, this, I guess the ceiling is four. I'm not wrong. So you, that's, that, you are going to split it into ceiling of many things. And the order of these jobs is decreasing PIJs. So what you do is you split it into four machines, and then you, all, you you allocate this fractional mass onto these four machines in such a way that every machine here gets at most one mass. Okay, every 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 machine here gets at most one mass. So this 0.7 goes directly here. This fellow had 0.6. It sends 0.3. This becomes one, and it removes the next point through the second copy, and so on and so forth. So every all but the last copy perhaps will exactly have one mass here. Maybe the last copy has less than one. Okay, so it's, it, it moves, it, it has made many copies of a machine and done this, uh, just, just massaging the solution. So after you do that, there are many copies, jobs, the total X mass here is one, 
the total x mass series is at most one. So this is a uh, if all the total x mass are exactly one, it will be exactly a fractional matching. So x is a fractional sub matching in this blown up bipartite graph, mm -hmm. and what that means is that there is a distribution of matchings on this blown up bipartite graph. Recall, I am looking for a matching. I want to send every job to some machine so that for every job and every machine copy, the probability that this is going there is at most x i j. And this is this is the crucial part we will meet. So this is a random matching. Once you do a random matching, this gets this job, this gets this job, this gets this job, this gets this job, the copies, and this machine gets all these four jobs. And that's the Schmoyer starter law. Why is it good? Well, let's analyze. The, the, the point is that this PIJ, the, total, the load for the, on the second copy, can be charged to the first copy. Why? Because the jobs were in decreasing order. So the, the PIJ for the second red edge is at most the PIJ is on these three edges. So the total summation PIJ, XIJ, the fractional allocation on the first copy will be more than the second this red, red edge. Similarly, third edge will be eaten up by the second edge and so on and so forth. So the load PIJ on second and more higher copies can be charged to the fractional load on the first copy. Okay. So believe me if you have not followed this, but that the load I is at most the total fractional load that was on this machine. Summation PIJ XIJ plus the first load has not been charged. The first load, there is no one to the light to charge. This is going to be some ZI, and ZI is the random load of the first copy. So if I subtract 2T, so note that I have to subtract T and or alpha T and take the positive part. If I subtract 2T and I write XIJ as Y plus Z, 1T will go, I, I put it here, and 1T I send for the ZI. And then I know that summation PIJ ZIJ is at most T. So that eats away the first t. So I get pij yij. This is what the LP was paying in the objective. And then I have this extra nagging term zi minus t. If this was not there, I would have an optimal algorithm. So now I need to analyze this fellow. Actually, sorry. So, so before that, if I look at the positive part, I get the positive part of zi minus t. So what's the expectation of this? Well, again, I'm going to use it as a random matching. So every job, the probability that job J goes on this copy is at most XIJ. So the probability, so ZI is a random variable which takes PIJ with probability XIJ. So this thing becomes exactly at most PIJ minus T's positive part times XIJ. But now I'm going to use the value inequality that I had, that PIJ YIJ is at least PIJ minus T plus XIJ. So I get another PIJ YIJ, which is two times the other. And that's it. Okay, so this was the technical part. So the, the old Schmoyer-Stratos algorithm that was only for the min-max, the randomized version, solves it for all L simultaneously. And since it solves for all L simultaneously, it solves the weighted ordered version also. You get a two approximation. So it's an instance. Well, it's an instance of a particular algorithm which solved all the L simultaneously. I, Doubt this happens for all problems. So when you say so for all else, you don't mean of belief is right. You need to know L. Yes. Sentence. Yes. Then you hope something that's oblivious that you don't don't tell L and it solves some solution for whatever else. No, I, I doubt that. That it's true. So it, it is a solution that's maybe worse approximation, but for what, uh, whatever L you pick, it's good. Right. I think if you if you look at just a sum and the max, yeah. you, you cannot hope to get this. I see. Uh, yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I have how many? Sorry. I, sorry. I just got lost there. So you said yeah. this one algorithm solves it for all L simultaneously, but it needs to know L to, to I, I guess, if L is there for an input to what it's doing, is that not true of any algorithm that is going to do it? I L top for any problem. It's going to be, if you tell it L, well then it's going to solve it for it. So therefore that single algorithm is there for all L. 
Right. So I, I lied a bit. What I want, what I should have said is that the rounding algorithm looked at only X and rounded. The Ys and Zs were used for analysis. So for example, for if you had many Ls, I will have many splits. So Xij will be split as Y1, Ij plus Z. No, I'll have all the constraints in there together. So the final solution of the Xs will have that property. The X can be split for every L into Ys and Zs simultaneously. And since my algorithm only uses X and not the Ys and Zs, it will work, it will satisfy for every L simultaneously. So that's that's the right thing I want to say. So for the weighted LP, there are log n guesses. So I'll have log n different Ys and Zs, all summing up to X. As in I'm not presenting that, but but the fact that is used for the weighted version or ordered version is that the, this rounding did not look at the y and z, it only looked at x, it was oblivious to the y and z. It used the presence of the y and z to argue that this thing, uh, come on, this this part just existed, it needed just the existence, but it did, the, the algorithm did not use y and z. This is not always the case. For k-media, for the cluster problem, if I use the same idea of splitting x into y and z, uh, we don't know just using the x. So for that, we need to do a sep separate thing. And brings me to my question, how much time do I have? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. So, so let me let me basically say the one I, we, we already saw how to solve the clustering version using the direct application. It failed because uh, this, this thing was not satisfying triangle inequality. If this did satisfy triangle inequality, it would be another K-median instance and I would be done. So let's call this, let's give this a name. So D, D tilde ij, which is just dij minus t truncated part, I say it's ht times dij. ht times dij does not satisfy triangle inequality, but it does satisfy the following property. Uh, this is these are both trivial. So it says that if a is less than b, this function is monotone, and maybe this is it. This is the triangle inequality part. That if you take any three numbers x plus y plus c, triangle inequality would have liked to say that. Well, the claim is that h times three s. So if you subtract three and apply on the sum, that's at most the sum of these three things. Okay. So the triangle inequality part is if you have a picture like this, and it's not visible here, but this line is dotted. Normally, you say the distance between a and y is at most the distance between b and y plus distance between x and b plus distance between a and x. I would like to say that for the h version of that, that's not true. That is, ht of a y is at most ht of this plus ht of this plus ht of this. But what is true is h3t of this. Okay. And a priori, it's not clear why this is useful, but Again, it's one, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this, one particular algorithm for the K-median problem, this primal dual algorithm, which I'm not going to get into, which basically at some point uses a picture precisely like this and uses the fact that this distance is at most this distance plus this distance plus this distance, and then uses some algorithms properties to bound it by some tools. This is the part that fails for the HT version. But this is exactly the part where I, if I put a slack of 3t, which is the pi priority result, everything goes through. So in some sense, it was that observation. And if you know Jain Vazirani, you can solve the cluster K-median problem. And the fact that this 3t is good enough, the pi priority result is good enough. I don't know how to solve opt t, but I can have a wiggle room here and I can solve this. So this, as in, uh, basically, you can get what are called Lagrangian multiplier preserving results, which says I can find always a set of clients so that the cost, when the, so if you take out 3t plus three times the facility cost is at most three times the dual. And if you apply standard techniques, you, okay, so, okay, again, I, I, this doesn't make sense because I did not go with the algorithm, but standard techniques gets another factor hit because to go from such a statement to k median, you lose another three hit. If you're slightly more sophisticated, you can get a five approximation. So this is what we know. For this clustered 
came, um, top L version of the K median, the L centrum problem. Right now, we can get a fiber approximation. This is significantly better than the uh, two results I mentioned in the history, uh, which was also from this year. And I think, and I think that this can be brought down to just three, which would be tight. Which would, you cannot do better. Three because K centered, you cannot do better. Yeah, I did not say these are dual variables. So it's the giant value and it's dual variables. I, I can't help but notice this. It seems to be some connection to cost sharing. There is a lot of uh, relation between cost sharing and giant value dynamic for facility location games. Right. Um, like it seems like you're trying to. Yeah, I don't know. Then, to see your yeah, so I, the part that I skipped about is just giant value dynamic. Okay. Uh, and the only part that so Jayanagari does not need triangle inequality, relaxed triangle inequality works. And that's how they can solve K means. And this is also a relaxed triangle inequality. So it's in a different sense. So why do you say K center has an approximate? Uh, I'm looking at the facility three. version. Oh, so the facility client, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So this works even with the facility. But yeah. OK, so. That was fast, and uh, if you don't know Jain Mazinani, that was probably not very uh, thought provoking, except the fact that there's a triangle inequality, and then you just apply the existing machinery to get a good approximation out of it. So, maybe let me conclude. We looked at this ordered optimization problem and saw a simple framework. And again, I'll reiterate that the problem that I would like to have solved, I don't know, that if the min sum version, the min max version were easy, I could solve this. It seems that the framework exists and there should be some way of, it's not, it's not a pipe dream. I think this can be said. So that's the maybe open question. Uh, I was talking about top L and uh, the question is about ordered optimization with the weights. Somewhere in the middle, even the question that I don't know, it's more annoyingly is that if the top L can be solved, then can the order be solved up to this one plus epsilon hit? Even that I don't have an uh, answer for, although for these problems, case by case, we can do that for different reasons. One is that one was oblivious, only use the x, and here the, 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 the function that satisfies triangle inequality also satisfies the relaxed triangle inequality for the ordered problem. So different reasons, so that's why it's not there yet. But maybe the last question I want to end with is why stop at this top L and wait it order? What if I have, again, going back, there is this multidimensional problem. You have various costs. And instead of taking the sum or the max, the top L or the weighted top L, you have an arbitrary convex function. So top L is a convex function of this vector. So it's, an, it's a convex integer programming problem. I have an arbitrary convex function. Maybe it's not too arbitrary, maybe just a norm. Can you solve, say, the k-median problem or the load balance problem? And as far as I know, this has not been looked at. And don't know the answer. You're talking convex ordered objectives in some. So it's convex function of the order of the sorted cost vector, not of the original cost vector. No, it's a convex function of the, of the cost vector. And and the top L is a convex function. So if I take give you a vector and I look at the top L, that's a particular convex function. But I could take X transpose AX, so X is the cost vector for some PSD matrix. I don't know how to solve those problems. I think it's interesting. And with that, uh, stop. So do you know the answer to that question for top L? Third question. This one? This one? Yeah. No, no, I don't know. No, even for top L, I don't know. It should be true. I will be surprised as in, there might be a pathological problem for which is false. L equal to n by two is hard, but n and one are. So, so some, but some statement which weeds out these pathological cases should be true. It feels of that. But I don't. Maybe I'm missing something. Okay.